Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I want to share with you just a word about a 10 minute message that I want to share with you on, on regarding the cross of Calvary. The cross where Christ Jesus was crucified. May the Lord bless this little message to many hearts all over the world. Praise God. Amen. I'm speaking to you on the tragedy and the triumph of the cross. There is a tragedy in that he had to suffer such terrible sufferings on that cross. And there is a triumph because it is through that cross and through his blood that was shed that we are forgiven and that we have a home in heaven. And that's the only way, according to the Bible, we'll ever get to heaven. It's through the cross. It's through the blood. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9 chapter, that without the shedding of blood there will be no forgiveness of sin. And so, dear friend, thank God that you're a believer in Jesus, that you belong to God, and that you're on your way home. But it's all because of that cross. Over 2,000 years ago when Jesus hung upon that tree and saved us from my devil's hell and gave us a home in heaven. And so we read over in the book of of uh, Matthew in the uh, in the 27th chapter it says they led him away to a place called Golgotha which is interpretation a place of a skull there was nothing beautiful about Calvary and Golgotha and there they crucified him they crucified him nailed him to a cross at a place called Golgotha or we call also Calvary and there he bled and suffered for us. And they put up all his, over his a, a name and a sign written, This is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And there he hung upon that cross and died for you and for me. You see, the Bible said there must be a shedding of blood. There must be a sacrifice given in order for us to be saved and forgiven. Over in the book of uh, 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 First John in the fourth in the first chapter of 1 John, John, it says the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Holy Son, cleanses us from all sin. And that happens when you believe in Jesus as your Lord and ask Him to forgive you and repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I believe you died for me and paid for my sins and on the cross you died so I could live. And so we see the tragedy and the triumph of the cross. Because when you believe in Him as your Lord, then all your sins are forgiven because they're all paid for on that cross. Over in the book of Genesis, in the very first chapter, I know it's about the third chapter, right in the beginning of all creation, uh, there was Adam and Eve, and they had two sons, uh, 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 Cain and Abel and so it was that they were to offer their sacrifices to the Lord Cain and Abel and so Cain brought a sacrifice of beautiful fruit said well here's something I can offer and Abel brought a sacrifice of a lamb that had been slain and he offered it and the Bible said God accepted Abel's offering of the lamb he did not accept the offering of Cain the reason was Cain did what he did in his own strength. He did it, said, ah, here's something I've done. Here's something that I have acquired. Here's what I can do. Here, Lord, I'm going to offer this to you. But Abel, somehow Abel was given faith to look down through the ages and to see a cross and to know that there was one that was to come and die upon that cross and save us from our sins. And they would call him the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And so he offered the lamb, and God accepted it. From the very beginning, the cross was so important. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, the cross is central. Everybody in the Old Testament looked forward to the coming of the Christ and the, and the coming of that cross. Everybody in the New Testament looked back at the cross and they praised God that it is done and they can believe and it is accomplished. So praise the Lord, the glory of the cross. It is the hope of the world. It is our hope today 
the blood that was shed was shed for you and me. And he rose again from the grave. And he lives today. And he's coming back. So thank God. Thank God for this is true. When we think about the cross, we think about a scripture over in the book of Isaiah in the 53rd chapter. It says, He was rejected and counted as a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. And we esteemed him not. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our sins and iniquities. He was chastised for our peace. And by his stripes we are healed. Oh, praise the Lord. We're healed from sin and death and hell by those stripes. When he went to that cross, they beat him with the cat of nine tails of Roman whips until his back was a mass of blood. But by those stripes we are healed. And so God, in his righteousness, demanded that our sins be paid. And they were paid on the cross. Jesus paid for them. And therefore, when you trust in him now as our risen Lord and Savior, you're saved forever because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And now he sits upon his throne in heaven and he is reigning in his glory, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Hallelujah. And he loves you very much and he knows exactly where you are and he's going to be always with you. And the Holy Spirit lives in your life. Oh, and he will teach you all things and guide you in the way you need to go. And so we see the beauty and the blessing of the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The little story is told of a little boy in London, England, that was lost and was standing on the corner of the street and crying. And a policeman came by and said, What is it, son? He said, I'm lost. I don't know the way back home. Well, he tried to talk to him a while. He couldn't get much from him. He said, well, well, let's go down to the cross. Now, in, in central London, there is a cross, beautiful cross called the Charing Cross. And so the policeman said, let's go down to the Charing Cross and, and we'll see if we can't find out where you live. And the little boy smiled and he said, oh, if you take me to the cross, I, I can find my way home from there. He knew the way home from that cross. And there is a truth there revealed, and that is, if you find the cross of Calvary, you'll find a way home to heaven. Hallelujah. God bless you. God help you know that this is the way home, and this is the blessing of Calvary and of God's love. God loved you so much, he was willing to die that you might live. And now he lives in his glory, and he's coming back, and he wants to take you home to heaven. So you need to ask him to come in your heart. If you've never done that, you need to pray and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for all my sins. I believe he rose again. And I believe he's coming back. Come in my heart. And Lord, help me live for you. Amen and amen. Pray a prayer something like that. And you will live forever. And you will be saved from a devil's hell. And you will have a home in heaven forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> well might the sun in darkness hide, and oh, hide its glories in. When Christ, the mighty Maker, died for man, the creature's sin. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Oh, <clears throat> could I hold the boat that sacred head for such a worm as I? 
Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we must give ourselves to Him. We must give ourselves to Him. And as we give our hearts to Him by faith believing, He redeems us. We're saved forever. God bless you, dear friend. God loves you. I love you. And one day we're going to meet together and be together forever because of the cross of Calvary. Amen and amen.